basically I will show you uh, the brand new feature, which is the Copilot custom instructions. You can do it at the same time as I do it. I will highly advise you to do it later, but we are going to customize Microsoft Copilot so it understands many things from you every time. So right now, every time I tell people to prompt, which is asking a question to Copilot, I'll I tell them add as much detail as possible, but be concise, you know, be specific, add details, etc. This is still the case, but there is a new feature which allows you to tailor your Copilot so you, you give it custom custom instructions. So we're going to go there together here in settings when you click the three dots at the top, settings, and see here in personalization, you will have the custom instructions here, right? It's brand new, maybe it has not rolled out to you yet. I think it's going to be only available if you have a paid version of Copilot, but I'm not 100% positive. It might be available for free, for everyone that has the M365 Copilot. So if you log in Microsoft Copilot with your business email, right? Let me know if you can see that on your screen right now. Click the three dots at the top right. Go here, custom instructions. And here you have the custom, custom instructions here. And let's go really slow here. It says add details you want Copilot to know about you and specify how you would like it to format its response. Hey, we got Nicholas in the house. What is up, my friend? How are you doing? Uh, I'm just explaining here the custom instructions and the Copilot memory. <laughs> great to, to see you showing up, man. Super great. We're just chilling here with our Friday morning coffee. See here, if you don't write anything, you will see this at the, at the, in the background. And I want to, sh I want to show you this. Feel free to include your details about your interests, preference, goals, or any specific context that could help Copilot deliver the best possible assistance and personalized insights, right? So basically, I'm going to try some stuff today, guys, and I will write just like that, just live on the screen with you, my custom instructions. Uh, it's not available to you yet. Okay, so it's, it's progressively rolling out. But basically, what we want to understand here is that Every time you're going to ask a question to Copilot, you won't have to give that much context because it's going to include these instructions that are right here. So I will give context to Copilot. So I say, I'll say I'm David Fortin. I own a small business. This small business is a YouTube channel where I teach people Microsoft Copilot, right? So I give context to Copilot so it understands why I'm going to use Copilot for. And again, guys, this won't be perfect. Like I won't go through all of writing my own life into that, but you will want to write stuff that you want Copilot to remember. By example, if you use Excel on a daily basis, you, want, you might want to write there that you use Excel on a daily basis and your favorite functions are VLOOKUP, uh, I don't know, nested if, some ifs, stuff like that. And you will write, I'm a budget analyst. I do a lot of budgeting. I talk to people that are non-financial sometimes. So Copilot will answer you considering these information. So here I say, I'm David Fortin. I own a small business. The small business is a YouTube channel where I teach people Microsoft Copilot. I make videos. I make tutorials for beginners and intermediate on the new AI tool from Microsoft, which ultimately leads to my online course website, which is hosted on Thinkific, right? So I gave enough context here to Copilot. So it knows that I have a YouTube channel that I sell online courses on the topic, right? And I will do some space here just to see that it's clear. I also give live trainings to clients. In the past year, I taught more than 1000 professionals, Microsoft Copilot live, either in person or online. Oh, I could say here that I am a LinkedIn instructor for beginners on YouTube. So I'm just going on top of my head here, guys. Uh, not really structured, but you could you, you will want to structure these by paragraphs, you know, like who you are, 
what do you do with Copilot, etc. And here, one thing I will write is um, I will use Copilot to help me negotiate contracts, draft proposals for live trainings, for my copilot, for my live copilot trainings, right? So basically, I'm just typing in what I'm going to use copilot for. I will use copilot to draft LinkedIn posts about tips and tricks I show to my audience on copilot. And now you could tell copilot who's your audience, right? This is a bit. This is a bit inception here because I um, I teach Copilot, so I hope Copilot won't get you know messed up with the fact that I teach Copilot and I keep saying Copilot in the customer instructions. It should be fine, right? My audience are professionals from twenty five to fifty five years old, mainly. If you're older than that, I'm sorry, but this is where my main audience is. That I've pretty much never used a uh, Copilot, Microsoft Copilot before. And I want to address this professional audience during my LinkedIn post. And we're going to try it, okay? I will also use Copilot to draft emails to answer to my clients. Most of them ask for contracts. Hey, Nicholas, was nice to see you, man. Take care, buddy. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. So um, basically here, I will say something. I will try something, my friends. And we're going to try it in a second here. Here, where I talk about LinkedIn posts, because it's what I do. Um, I will say for every LinkedIn post that I'm asking you to write, could you come up with two versions? One that is more professional one that is more concise. Please identify these two versions clearly when you answer me. Okay. And basically, uh, I won't, I will delete that. Who am I at the top? And we're going to try that. Okay. We're going to try that. And Copilot will understand that every time I'm asking him a question, him or her, <laughs> uh, it will go back to these custom instructions to, to help grabbing some context, right? <laughs> so I will just hit save here and we're going to test out the LinkedIn stuff that I did here. It's not intended to do that, but I want to, to try it out, right? So basically you will need to start a new conversation because, because if you stay in the old conversation, it won't work. So I will click here at the top, right? Make sure I have a, a great conversation. So I will say, can you write a LinkedIn post about the best Microsoft Copilot tips, the one you can analyze a PDF with the free version of Copilot. And here I want to see compare two PDFs. I want to see if Copilot will actually give me a quick, uh, you know, a concise version and a long version because I gave it in this, um, in this custom instruction. This is what I've put. I sorry guys, I can't talk this morning. Maybe I should not go live on a Friday at 8 AM after three days of camping where I slept very badly. <laughs> uh, but here we go. Okay. We're going to try it out. You can analyze Excel spreadsheets, right? So we're going to see, oh, there we go. So this is the custom instructions. You see it right here. So copilot gave me a professional version of my LinkedIn post. Let me zoom out a little bit. See, this is, this was for my custom instructions. It gave me a professional version and it gave me a concise version, right? And just because in the custom instructions, let me go back at it. Click here on the three dots at the top settings, copilot instructions here for every LinkedIn post that I'm asking you to write, could you come up with two versions? one that is more professional, one that is more concise, please identify these two versions clearly when you answer me. And boom, just like that, Copilot detected that I made a LinkedIn post and it gave me a professional version and a concise version. Do you have an idea of how much time this will save me? 
guys, I write LinkedIn posts once a day, sometimes twice a day. And, you know, I could say different stuff here. I could say, could you give me three potential hooks for all of my LinkedIn posts, considering that my audience is a professional audience? Could you also give me a hook for my audience that is accounting audience, etc. right? Pretty cool, right? Let me know what you think in the chat. I think these custom instructions are really, really good. And let, let's try and test that further here, right? Um, I will say, could you draft a proposal for a client and give them my authority factors? I'm not sure if factor is great. I want to say like, hey, I thought more than 1,000 professionals in the past year. Here we go, right? Why work with me? Trusted by 1,000 professional, trained in the past year, blah, 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 YouTube educator, course creator on Thinkific. You know, all of that is coming from my custom instruction. So that thing works, guys. That thing works. Let me know what you think about all of that. I think it is wonderful. And hopefully uh, you guys get the most out of it, right? So basically, we're already 28 minutes in. I don't want to make you wait longer. Let's go to the settings. And you can click on custom instructions to, um, to set it up for yourself. Okay, so let's go settings. Uh, and, and here, Copilot memory. What is Copilot memory? So this feature exists in ChatGPT. So right now, if you're using Copilot and you don't have you know, the memory available. So what is memory is that Copilot right now, if you type it something in, it won't remember anything. If you start a new conversation, it's, it's starting from scratch except if you're using the work tab where it's going to go in your work files, etc. But if you are in the web tab and you type something in Copilot, it won't know who you are. It has no clue who you are. AI cannot read your mind. With memory, AI can a little bit read your mind, but that's dangerous. I explained this to all of the people when I gave ChatGPT trainings because this feature is available in ChatGPT already. And basically what memory does is that it will become more personal as you go, as you chat. It will use some chunks of conversation. And it's going to feed its memory. Let me just show you on ChatGPT real quick. How does my memory looks like? Um, I can probably click here at the bottom, go to settings, and then I will go to personalization and manage. Okay, this is my memory here on ChatGPT and it is exactly the same on Copilot. So basically, ChatGPT tries to remember most of my chat, but it may forget things over time. Same thing for Copilot. You see here, all of the chunk here, all of these are memories, are stuff that ChatGPT in this case, but the same for Copilot, will have remembered, right? So basically you see that Dave Fortin is giving a Microsoft Copilot training to the Green Climate Fund Real Estate Department. The training includes a, a use case where AI analyzes a project for compliance and risk based on GCF policies. If I want Microsoft Copilot, in this case ChatGPT, to, to, to forget about this memory, you can click here on the little garbage, remove and then you click on forget, right? Because see here, Dave Fortin's mother's name is Linda. Shout out to my mom. My mom is in every of my presentation. I don't really want ChatGPT to remember that, right? I don't really want ChatGPT to remember that. So I will just delete it. So what I will advise you to do is eventually uh, delete all your memories because as things evolve, your role is evolving in your business uh, and, and you know, you might not want Copilot to remember all of that. So I, I showed you with uh, with with ChatGPT because it it was released like a while ago, but it just came out to Copilot. So as we go, uh, as we go with Copilot, it's going to remember some some stuff from your conversation, and you will see a list probably showing up in this uh, this black box here. So. Uh, when chatting with Copilot, it will remember details to personalize your experience. You can also create rem memories by remem by saying, remember, I like concise response. So if you use remember before, you will be able to, it will log the, the stuff, it will log the text in the memory, and it's going to show up here. And you can turn it off, by the way. You can turn it off 
you, you might be, you know, you might be using chat GP or Copilot with your, I don't know, with your colleague. I'm not sure sharing a license, not sure if it's, if it's uh, legal, but you know, don't do that. But if you don't want Copilot memory, you can turn it off here, right? So it won't impact your memory won't be fed by a Copilot or if you're using, you know, Copilot for a special specific project for the next two hours and you don't want it to remember stuff or you're using Copilot to cook, uh, you know, a pizza and you don't want this to go in your memory, you just click here and you toggle that thing off, right? For the next two or three uh, hours, right? And then guys, I just saw that at the same time as you, it just came out. We're going to go into the work profile. Um, Okay, you can, okay, cool. It's it's going, you can tune up your Microsoft 365 profile and it's going to impact your memory. I didn't know that, but that's a cool feature that they've put it in. So is it clear for the memory guys? Um, how is memory different to chat history? Okay, that's a super great question. See here, I have multiple chat history. These don't talk to each other. These right now are completely standalone, but now, if I keep prompting and asking something, it's going to feed the memory. And if I ask Copilot something, it's going to go look in its memory and it's going to be, oh, I think he told me about this the other day. So let's say I talk here to Copilot. I will say, I remember that I have an online course that is called Microsoft Copilot Essentials from AI Beginner to Proficient, right? It should add it to the memory, right? It should see it say it says memory updated here, right? And if I click on a new chat and I will ask, can you make a proposal to a client with my copilot course into it, right? It's going to say, uh, it's not there, but it show oh, here we go. Course access, Copilot Essentials, right? So this is getting picked up from my memory. I should I should put it in my in my custom instructions. And this is pulled up from my custom instructions. I think this is a very great example. So since I asked a question in a past discussion, it went and fed the memory for my Copilot Essentials course. And now when I'm asking questions related to this topic, Copilot will go look in its memory and it can feed my conversation. This will not have been the case two days ago where memory didn't exist, right? And now let's go back to the memory and see what happened here. Settings, memory, here we go. Very similar to ChatGPT, David's 14 online course is called Copilot Essentials from AI beginner to proficient. All right, speaking of that, guys, I hope that, that answered your question, whoever it is in the chat. I only see a LinkedIn user. Uh, guys, if you want to have a look at my Copilot Essentials course, I've put it in the chat. Thank you to have attended. I hope you enjoy. I hope you understand better what is a Copilot instruction now, what is a Copilot memory, and uh, happy prompting. I will catch you very soon. Cheers.